Hello and welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to look at how to install mods in CC for beginners or a refresher if you haven't done it in a while. So when you first open up your game, on the right you'll see a button labeled Options. When the menu pops up, you'll want to click Game Options. Then on the left, click Other. And you'll see by default we have checked Enable Custom Contents and Mods. We want to make sure that remains checked. Also, we want to make sure to check here where it says script mods allowed and then click OK. This is very important because a lot of mods require script files such as MC Command Center, a lot of Lupinels mods, and just a lot of big mods in the community. Sacrificial, I can go on, on and on. Um, underneath, there's a button labeled View Custom Content. Now, this will show you a list of any custom content and script mods that you've installed. This list loads up every time you start up if this option show at startup is checked i suggest unchecking it because if you have it open up every time you start your game depending on the amount of cc or custom content or mods you have it can really lag your startup process so i suggest unchecking it and clicking ok click apply changes click this x to close and then finally exit your game to reload that's a very important step to reload all of the changes you've just done. Next, how to place your mods in the mods folder. If you're using PC, you'll have a documents folder and in that documents folder, you'll have a folder labeled electronic arts. Click on that and then you have your Sims 4 folder. And then finally, you'll see you have your mods folder. This is where all of your mods will go. Now there's, there's three type of file that you will encounter in your journey of downloading custom content and mods. Package files, script files, and zip files. Package files and script files can be placed directly in the folder with no issues. Zip files will have to be unzipped. Um, meaning you'll have to use a program like WinWare, WinZip, or sometimes if you have a, another software that can unzip files, you use that as well. To show you what I mean by that, I'm going to go to first Zero's Patreon. Zero is a big mod creator in the community, and they use a lot of package files. So if you click on the package file to download it, you'll be able to navigate to the folder I mentioned, Electronic Arts, The Sims 4, and then Mods, and then click Save. This will then save that particular mod in the folder. If you're downloading a script file, such as MC Command Center, which is a collection of script files and package files, when you click download, and you pick where you're going to save your file, you don't want to save it in your mods folder. Very important. You want to either save it in a documents folder, downloads folder, or another place where you know all of your files that you're going to use are located. So I've opted for the documents folder. Now I'm using WinZip, which is a free program, it, or WinWare, I'm sorry, WinWare, which is a free program, and I'm using the trial edition. So it'll usually give you this option. You can just exit out and ignore it. Then you'll see here a collection of files. So you'll see they have one package file and then a collection of scripts. You'll want to make sure that you place all of these files in your mods folder. So when you click on them and click extract to, you get this little pop-up. You can either copy and paste the direction, or you can use this little navigation part on the right to drill down. So electronic arts, sends for mod, and then click okay. And that will place all of your mod files and script files in the folder. Now, if you load up your game and the mods aren't working, it could be a couple of things. It can be you maybe forgot to check that option we talked about under game options to enable script files. You may not have put all of the files in the folder. Like you may have put the package and not the scripts, or you may have put the scripts and not the package. Or a third option, which is you don't have the XML injector. XML injector is a mod package and script combination file that allows modders to inject certain interactions into the game. Um, we'll go into that a little bit more in depth. If you've been watching my tutorial series, you may have a little bit of a um, not knowledge of what I'm talking about. If not, don't worry. It's something that we can cover further down the line. 
when you Google XML injector, you'll get this website, Scumbumble Mods XML injector, and you can click download. This again is going to be a zip file. So if you don't want to put it in your mods folder, you want to put it in either a downloads or documents folder. And when you open it, you'll want to extract the script. Now in this case, this is one of the rare cases where only one of the files is absolutely required. You only need the script file in this case. The package file is a test. So if you're a modder and you're going to be using XML injector to make mods and things of that sort, then you can include the test package. Otherwise, you just need the script file. And once again, you want to make sure that goes into your Sims 4 mods folder and click OK. OK, so that's how you install mods. And then when you open up your game, they should now show up for you to use. So I'm going to show you a quick way to check that your mods are installed. Even before you get into the game. Okay, so once the game loads, we're going to go back to our options menu on the right. Options, game option, and then other. Okay, so this is that view custom content button. And see, you have your custom content and your script mod. This everything that's loaded into the game. Now, if I checked show up startup, this would have popped up automatically. And again, depending on how many mods or CC you have in your game, this can really lag your game. So that's why, again, I suggest, strongly suggest unchecking it. Okay, so that's our quick tutorial. Um, I hope you've learned something and I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. If you'd like, click the like and subscribe button and I'll see you next time. Thank you.